Welcome. Today we're going to show you how to input data into the map layer on the Rainbird Cirrus irrigation software. By using a map layer, you are able to efficiently water your golf course and are able to see what sprinkler heads are running and what the respective run times are. It also allows you to prevent watering areas that were not intended to at the time. For example, you are able to just select the green and manually run it from the central control in your office. First, we will show you how to use the map layer and the additional controls required. Then we'll show you how to label all the areas of your golf course. We'll then go through how to add stations as well as rotors. We'll show you how to adjust the head type and decoder style as well as what the program will do once a pump has been added to our theoretical system. We will now show you the directions of use for the map. At the top left of the screen and to the right of the compass you'll see the different control options. First you have the most selector for clicking capabilities. Next, we have the three zoom buttons. To zoom in, you need to click and drag over the area you wish to zoom in on. To zoom out, you simply click. Um, next comes how to move the map with the pan control. Then the map layer is an individual labeling control. Um, going into this allows you to turn on and off labels, including sprinkler heads, area labels, symbols, and lines. Uh, next is sprinkler information. Clicking with this button pressed allows you to see the information of each aspect. Next is go to an area button or go to a hole. This allows you to jump to a specific area on your golf course quickly. Uh, next is the delete button. Um, then comes moving aspects already placed on the map and your entire course map view. Add a label to the map. Go to your course data builder tab under the compass. First step is to label the holes on the map. This will allow for ease of use in the future, as well as labeling other areas on the map. Once all golf course area, area holes are labeled, move to working on the labeling the various areas of each hole. On our example map, on hole one, we have tees, grains, ferries, approaches, rough, and perimeter heads. We will now label all these areas. Be sure to place these labels away from the heads, we will be linking together. You will see this later in the video. Add stations to the map for head control visuals. First, you're gonna click on the existing stations lab, tab, on the top right hand side of the screen. Click add existing stations. Start with the T boxes, we will now create links to how many stations we have created based on the already imported database. Click the T on the map. This link the stations to the respective areas. Once a T has changed to the color blue, you are able to click each respective station in the area. Only add the required number of stations, not, in, not each individual sprinkler head. Adding rotors to each station. Firstly, you want to click on the existing stations tab, then click the add rotors button. And after this, clicking each station will turn it the color blue. Then you can add another rotor to the station. Add missing stations to the database. Under the compass menu, select the station details tab. Go to the correct hole and click the area at the top of the screen displaying the symbol that is missing the station. In this example, we are missing perimeter heads in our database. Select the P and this will take us to the perimeter heads for the station. Click the add button, which is the green plus sign. Ensure you assign a new decoder code that is original to the decoder and ensure you select the appropriate amount of rotors to be assigned to the zone. You will now be able to add these missing areas to the existing stations tab as well as their associated rotors. Step 6. Station details on the map. 
Once the heads are labeled in the map, you are able to see details of each station by right-clicking on the head in the course monitor section of the program. This will allow you to change the decoder's address, the runtime data, the rotor data, and precipitation data. All of, all of this data will change across the software, making adjust, adjustments easy for the irrigation technician. To input a pump, click the compass and then go to Flow Manager. Right click on the Flow Manager, then add a name to your pump. Then you input the pump capa capacity, click Apply, then OK. Runtime information. Go to Course Monitor and left click on the entire area letter, for example, G, T, R, or Perimeter P for heads. This will allow you to start or stop individual stations within the area or the entire area at once. You can select run times for each station and start and stop them as required. You'd start them using the green check mark and stop them using the red square. Once this is all done, we can now see our pump flow information next to our total GPM gallons per minute when irrigation system is running. To conclude, we have discussed how to maneuver around the map and what each button represents and the actions it can provide. We then showed how to label the map with the whole number along with the areas located on the whole, such as tees, fairways, approaches, greens, perimeter heads, roughs, and surrounds. We showed that once the areas were labeled, we were ready to start inputting sprinklers into the system and how we can link rotors together. An important thing we covered was how to add missing sprinkler stations into the database. Once all data was placed on the visual map, we discussed how to look at station details and change the individual information such as run times and rotor data. And lastly, we went over Flow Manager Builder and how to input a pump into your system and how to read the pump flow information once this pump was inputted. Thank you for listening to our Rainbird software video. I hope you got the information you were looking for. Take care.